Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another episode of Dorkside Cookies, The Ingredients. This is where um, I walk you through taking the components out, setting them up, and actually being able to play. I give a little bit of advice as I'm going, some advice in how better to set things up, and I give advice in kind of how the first round of play should go. And that should give you a little bit either so that you can pause and kind of do it as I'm doing it, or you can apparently watch this video while you're waiting for your Amazon delivery to show up, um, or your local game store to get it in. All right, <clears throat> so this series of reviews for Roll for the Galaxy have all assumed that you have the expansion, the only expansion that I know of, Ambition. Once I had opened it and merged it into the box, it was a real hassle to disassemble it. And it's a really good expansion, and it's mostly the same. I will call it out anywhere that uh, you wouldn't have the component if you did not have the Ambition expansion. Okay, so you open the box, and you're going to play with some friends. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull out the player mats. Now, obviously, when you first open the box, you're going to have uh, sheets of cardstock. And honestly, it's really impressive how many sheets of very thick cardstock are in this box. But assuming that you've already suckered somebody into helping you pop them all out, um, you've got it in the box, and that's where we're starting from. All right, so you pull out one player mat per friend. So I'm just gonna pull out two. And then you're going to pull out one player screen per player. Uh, they, they will, I don't want to block the camera or anything, so I'll just put them like so. Uh, one thing to point out, if you have the ambition set up, or ambition, I'm sorry. One thing to point out, if you have the ambition expansion, they give you a couple stickers to update your player screens. But either way, the player screens are really helpful both for how to set up, right? This little area right here shows your setup instructions. And this shows your odds. So when people say, is an orange die better than a red die? Well, the answer is, it depends. But this chart shows you which one is better for what you're trying to do, right? So that's, it's pretty cool. I don't know if every expansion is gonna have a new set of stickers so that you can just constantly update it or they will just try to avoid negating the validity of these, um, of these setups and dice probability screens. We'll see. All right, so you pull out one player screen per, per player. You're going to put out one cup with its matching um, little meeple. I, this is a weird maple, so I don't know what it is really. Like I like kameeples and book meeples and all kinds of different meeples. Maybe it's an alien maple. I don't know. Anyway, you take them both out. Just go ahead, put the maple on the one, the, you know, the colored matching one, cup, and maple and cup. If you notice, for storage reasons, we try to keep the matching color in a cup underneath the previous one. I just think it's easy, but you can do whatever you like. All right. Your points, your victory points, to be specific, you're going to count out 12 for every player. So in this case, just to make it easy, I'm just going to count out 20 and 2. Don't do that. You're just making it difficult on yourself later. So go ahead and put out some smaller numbers, right? So maybe a five and five ones. It's kind of like if you're a food server, don't give people big bills. Right? It just becomes, you, you know, you want to make it easy for people to tip you. 
All right, so 22. Now you're gonna put the rest of the points aside, but not back in the box, because at the end of the game, if somebody has consumed all of the victory points, which is one of the two end game scenarios, either people have put out 12 tiles or taken all the points. If all the points are gone, but somebody else in the same round still earns points, they reach for the bag and they take it from there. So um, don't, don't put it too far away. All right. If you're playing with the Ambition expansion, then you're going to want to put some victory point tiles, tokens, to just kind of out. You don't need a lot of them. Just put them somewhere handy for people to, to grab. Then you're going to want to put all the dice out. One of my personal favorite things about the game are the custom dice. I find it very um, tactile to, to play with so many dice and the colors are pleasing, everything. So just put those out to be accessible to people. You're going to want to put out one player, fi player phase tile per player. Now keep in mind, these tokens, or these, these um, phase selection tiles are going to go behind the player screen during play. Um, and then once people have decided what actions they're going to choose, you reveal it. All right. You're going to take the faction tiles. The faction tiles are oops, these gray backed double tiles. Those are the factions and you're going to want to deal out one randomly to each player. You're going to put out the active phase tiles in order. and probably just put them all inactive, right? So just put them somewhere, somewhere that somebody can, can reach. Now, personally, when I set this game up, what I normally do is if I'm host, I designate people to be responsible for certain sections of the game. So like I'll put all the dice towards one person and then I'll put the tiles normally towards somebody else and the bag of, of um, developments and settlements near yet another person. And that way, you're spreading the work, you're keeping people engaged during other people's turns, and um, it just kind of makes people have a little bit more um, investment in making sure the game runs smoothly. Because nobody wants their side of the board to, to run poorly. You're going to take six bonus objective tiles and just deal them out randomly. These are from the Ambition uh, expansion. So if you don't have the Ambition expansion, you won't have these tiles. These two orange things are some of the only components that are unique to Ambition, right? You have more tiles with Ambition but they're still just, you know, tiles. They work the same way as all other tiles. Um, you're gonna wanna deal out one home world, by the way, to each player. And then with that, you, you might as well deal out two tiles from the bag. Whoops, don't cheat. If you accidentally grab extras, just put them back. Um, you're going to grab two tiles from the bag and give them to each player. All 
All right. And now the players have a little bit of work to do to finish their personal setup. At this point, you've got tokens like laid out, 12 per player. You've got the dice available. You've got objectives, which you can you know, reveal so people can start planning their strategies. If you're like me, you'll manage to put every single one of them upside down. There you go. So you want to keep these within reading distance of all the players. Um, all right, cups handy, and let's let's see what's going on here. So, first of all, you might as well give each of the players either two white dice, which are explorers, into the cup and into the explore and into the citizenry. If you if you have ambition, you're going to put one leadership die in the cup. If you do not have ambition, you're going to put one extra explorer in the cup. So without ambition, you have three white dice in each cup and two white dice in each citizenry. But because I have ambition, I'm going to have two white dice in the cup and one black die in the cup. And same thing for the other players. Two white dice and a black die in the cup, two white dice in the citizenry. All right, and then let's look to see what we were given. So, the faction I have is the mining industry. So the mining, the mining industry includes a meteorite planet and they have advantages with the um, rare elements color, which is the, the brown color dye. Um, and then I have rebel convict miners. Now this is, this is like one of the best things I like about the game is the narrative that you can kind of tell with the game, right? So I have rebel convict miners. So they've, you know, they're printer, prisoners who've been forced to become miners and they, they're rebelling. And my faction is the mining industry. So Maybe they've cooed, they, you know, they've staged a coup and they've taken over. And so uh, what it's saying is begin the game with, so my faction with rebel convict miners, it says begin the game with $2 instead of $1 and gain a military red die into your cup. So I'm going to move my meeple to the number two and add a red die into my cup. So I got a little a soldier die in there. And then for the mining industry, it says... Every time that I ship, I get one additional dollar for each good I consume, but not trade, from a rare elements brown world. So I have a small advantage by acquiring more brown worlds. All right. And then uh, Meteorite Planet, all it is is a brown world. It's worth one victory point, and it gives me a brown die into my citizenry. So I'm just going to go ahead and put one more right there. And... Then I'm going to look at my two tiles. Now, I have to put one as a world and one as a development. So I can have the new galactic order. The new galactic order gives me advantages for every three red dice that I own. And whenever I settle each world, I put all red dice used into my cup instead of my citizenry. So I've already got some warriors from the rebels, right? The rebels seem to be good fighters, so they give me a red die. And then um, anytime I settle a world, I get to put all my red dice back into the cup, which basically makes them free. And then the, the world that goes along with that is a transport hub. And the transport hub, all it is is a four gray world and I get one dollar and a purple die into my citizenry when I place this world. All right, let's flip it and see what the other option looks like. Minor research labs and secluded world. The minor research labs gives me a victory, points, a victory point for each good that I consume from a green world or yellow world this phase. So that means that instead of getting one, two, or three for every green or yellow world, I get two, three, or four. Okay, and then secluded world, 
I gain a blue die into my citizenry when I place this world. Now, the advantages of going this way is it's cheap. I can just put these out almost immediately. And the minor research labs basically makes it so that I have an advantage for almost every color world in the game, which makes me just kind of focus on trading, right? Brown gives me an advantage, green gives me an advantage, yellow gives me an advantage, and they're cheap. Flipping it though, the new galactic order gives me a focus, red dice, and the transport hub is junk. I don't want it. It's not good for my strategy. So that's what I'm gonna go for. And I'm going to hope that this makes sense. We'll see. All right. Now the other player, evil me, if I had a goatee, or maybe I'd be clean shaven. Maybe I'm the evil me, I don't know. All right, so let's see first the faction. The faction is biological adaptation and they get an aquatic uplift world. So I think the uplift worlds are like um, some sort of evolutionary gen like technology to upgrade a, a species to be intelligent. All right. And Epsilon Eridani. They get a blue die and a red die into their citizenry at the start of their game. So blue and red. And Aquatic Uplift gain a green die into the cup at the start of the game. They have an advantage. All reassigned powers, uh, all reassigned power developments require one future, one fewer developer to complete, but no fewer than one. So Reassigned powers are very powerful in the game in general, and the fact that they can purchase them cheaper gives them a big buff. So let's see. All right. So the two options are technology unions. So technology unions, a dollar, if you have the most developments in Tableau at either or both the explore and the produce phase. That's one dollar, but it could be two dollars, and it could happen a lot. And then a, a brown world, which I, ironically my other account, the evil me or good me, I don't know which one anymore, um, the miners would like. And if I flip it, galactic mandate. When using dictate, you may reassign up to three other workers to any phase. Okay, they get to buy it cheaper and it's a good power. Being able to give up one die to move three to anything you want. That's, that's easy, done. Uh, the other thing is a deserted alien colony. Yellow dice are generally better because you can trade them for more money. They're worth more points and um, they get a dollar when they put the planet out. So I, I think that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna put these kind of over, but um, for camera purposes, we won't, we won't do anything behind it. And let's see here. At this point, you want to look at your tableau and make sure that your dice match what they should have, right? So I should have started with two white in the cup, two white in my citizenry, and I do. I have one black die in the cup, and I have one brown die in the citizenry, and I have one red die in the cup. So that matches what the tableau says. And then I look over here, green die in the cup, two white dice in, in the cup, black die in the cup. Okay, it all matches. And blue, red, and two whites in the citizenry. So we're good here. So at this point, so at the beginning of the game, in my opinion, though I, I don't necessarily win a lot, but I always play well. So if you wanna be a strong second or third place, then you can really trust my opinion. Um, and then just figure out what I'm doing wrong and go that extra notch. Anyway, <laughs> um, my opinion is in the very beginning, you want to work on your ability to generate cash so that you always have a lot of dice for the entire rest of the game. However, sometimes you see a little bit of a strategy kind of come out. Like obviously if I get the new galactic order out, I'm gonna want red dice more than anything else. Having said that, if I don't get some sort of income source, an income stream, I'm really gonna be unhappy later in the game. 
So anyway, let's play the first round and we'll just kind of see how it goes. All right, so all that you're gonna do is normally, you know, screen, roll the dice, and that's how you do it. You don't show people immediately. What you normally do is you're going to put all of the matching symbols in front of the phase that they match, okay? So in this case, I rolled three subtle symbols and I, throwed, uh, I rolled one produce symbol. Now, I look here, I already said I do not want this transport hub world. However, I may get it anyways because I can afford it. Now you say, wait a minute, the transport hub costs four, but I only have three that I rolled. Here's what you do. The first thing you wanna do is you want to decide which phase that you're going to activate. You can have dice on any phase you want, but the phases that do not activate, those dice are just gonna go back in the cup. So choose the phase you need and take any die you want. In this case, I'm gonna take my produce die and put it on the phase that you're going to activate. The phase will be activated for everyone, and so I know I've done settle. There is no explore this phase. All right, now, that's, I mean, in this case, that's, that's pretty much it for this player. They started with three dice in settle. I took my produce die. It's still produce, right? It's still a symbol, but in this turn, it's going to act like a settle icon. Don't change them because it'll get confusing if you decide to step back or undo your turn, right? So up until the point you lift this, you can change as much as you want. All right, so there we go. I've, I've decided to go over here. So, you know, this is down. And, oh, and for us, typically we put our cup down when we're done deciding. That way, everybody knows when they can lift. All right, so a wild card, just put that aside. Settle, eyeball, produce. All right, now they want, or this player would want two dice for galactic mandate, okay? So I'm gonna put that wild card under development. Now again, it's two because their special power is to pay for re reassigned developments one less. So it's a three becomes a two. All right, then I've got to settle and I've got to produce. Now, I don't want to produce, period. And I barely want to settle. But what I'm going to do is I will take the produce and I will move it to the development phase. So now I have activated the development phase and the settle, the die is just going to sit there. Maybe the other player will activate Settle, maybe they won't, but either way, I can't really do anything with it. I could give it up by moving it to Dictate to move this over, but actually I like it being Explore because if the other player activates Explore, I'm gonna get money. So even in the future, it's all about the money. All right, so this player is done. And now everybody lifts their screens. And then what you do is you look at each person's uh, phase selector and you activate their phases. At this point, we have development active, we have settle active, and because it's a two player game and only in a two player game, you do one extra thing. After everybody's selected, roll one Explorer die. And if this symbol was not one we had selected, that phase would activate two. So normally in a three or four person game, you come to rely on a lot of phases every turn. This, this phase in a two player game kind of gives you a little bit of that feel. Though it really is a better game and in you know three to four players so uh, i rolled a settle 
which means because it was already activated, nothing happens. All right. So then you activate the rounds simultaneously. So development phase, this player has no development dice, no workers, and this die does. Now what happened to this explorer? Well, it goes back in the cup. Because it was not spent, it goes back in the cup, done. Then these two go out here. Because it's finished, because it costs two for this player, it goes out. And these go back in the citizenry. And then settle, this player has a tough choice. Does he really want the deserted alien colony? I'm gonna just say yes. I, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. It's probably a solid number two or number three ranking choice right there. There we go, done. All right, um, and of course, they activated the settle phase as well, right? So he, he settled during the settle phase. This player puts all four out here. Now, I said I didn't want it, but Chance gave it to me, so I might as well just take it. All right, so these guys go back into the citizenry, except any die that has a dollar sign on it that matches the symbol of the activity you're doing, in this case, settle, goes back in the cup instead of uh, going back in the citizenry. So these three go in the citizenry, the black guy goes back in the cup, and transport hub is out. Transport hub says gain one dollar and a consumption die into your citizenry when you place this die. Purple die. Purple die is an excellent die. It's like a wild card. It matches any color for the purposes of consuming. And that could be my strategy to win the game, so it's pretty good. All right, then at the end, you turn these back over. They're all finished. You look around to make sure that nothing activated that you might have missed. You look at your bonus objectives to see if anything matches over there. And this early in the game, it'd be pretty rare. And of course, nothing did. But, you know, it could happen, theoretically. And finally, during the Manage Empire phase, you spend your money. So in this case, $3 will give me three dice. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to choose brown, red, and purple. Put those back in the cup. And the green player will put one leader die. I like the leader die more than any other die, so that's what I want. And uh, so we look around and the green player is pretty strong. They have a powerful ability to move dice around and get, the, get what they want. This player already was being controlled by the dice, right? Like luck was defining this player's choices. And the... I, I just don't, I mean, a, an empty gray world with four points, it's worth four points, but it's not really gonna help this player much in the future. On the other hand, this player's dice has four workers, and this die, this cup only has two, so it's pretty even, actually. And that is game setup and the first turn. Now, just a few last points. Personally, this level of randomness is um, mostly a good thing. I mean, I, I love this because it's a dice game, so obviously I like randomness to a certain extent. However, our house rule is normally we, this makes more sense with the Ambition expansion, but with the Ambition expansion, you have so many factions. And you may not like some of them. And you may end up feeling like another player has an advantage because they got a better faction. So what we tried doing the past couple times is giving people a choice. So I deal out two and then let them choose. And then I deal them out two homeworlds and then let them choose. You could give them two homeworlds and then two factions but I make people choose beforehand because the important thing there is that you don't necessarily know which 
home org you're going to get with which faction. But it does give people a little bit more feeling like if they lose the game, maybe it was more they made tactical choices that didn't work out as opposed to they didn't have any control. They got a crappy faction and the other person just wins. So that's a, that's a house rule we do. Um, other than that, the game is solid, so we just play by the rules. And that was the ingredients for Roll for the Galaxy with the Ambition expansion. Click like, click subscribe, and roll on.